2003, I gave Vladimir Putin, in 2003, I gave Vladimir Putin permission to translate my unfinished novel, Silver Skies, into German and Russian, and to publish it as an unfinished novel. And he told me brain to brain that it was a blockbuster. In fact, Vladimir tried to give me the writing money from it. This was like 2003, but he ended up giving the money to my mother's Jesuit clone, so I never got it. He couldn't meet me directly for security reasons or something. I was amazed that the unfinished novel was doing so well. Finally, in 2005, I picked up the unfinished novel as a joke to myself, saying, let's see if this book is any good and if you're a writer. I had completely forgotten the storyline and everything and I couldn't put it down. I finished it in one day. After re reading it, I realized that I suffered from writer's block in 1996, which is another reason that I gave up on it in 1996, besides the fact that I found out about Laurie McBride, because I'd originally written it for Brent. And as I was writing it, I did not understand how to write in unlimited point of view, where the author interprets, interprets the events for the reader in the story and um, and I was trying to write this person, I mean, write this book all in third person limited point of view where the character interprets the events of the story for the reader. And by rotating the characters and trying to present each scene from the point of view of one character per scene, which is generally a wise thing to do when you write a novel, it makes it easier for the reader to identify with the story and lose themselves in the story. But when I read it cold, I realized that this novel needed unlimited point of view, and I was trying to force this story into third-person limited point of view, which is the biggest reason the first half of the novel drags. As a new writer in the early 1990s, I was too scared to go outside the point of view of one character per, per scene and lacked confidence in my writing ability to handle unlimited point of view. And it made the first half of the novel kind of stilted because I really needed to go into unlimited point of view for this book. In the children's writing course that I took through Jim Murphy, my writing teacher, you don't usually use unlimited point of view. He's an award-winning children's writer. He's the only writing teacher I've had. So I had not been trained in unlimited point of view, and I learned this on my own. My novel gets really strong in the second half because the second half has very strong unlimited point of view and I have some brilliant stream of consciousness scenes there. Stream of consciousness is when a character or the author goes deep into thought and feeling and bears their heart on the page. It often sounds like a philosophical discourse but, but it's told from the point of view of a character or the author. A War and Peace, The Thornbirds, Exodus, Gone with the Wind, Pride and Prejudice are all written from unlimited point of view. I do have one novel I like that was written in first person point of view and that's Charles Dickens' David Copperfield, one of my favorite books. I have a very strong voice in my writing so that's why it's generally better for me to write in unlimited point of view because I'm a strong writer in unlimited point of view. And all my favorites are in unlimited point of view and they say you should write what you like to read I finished the novel with a very strong, unlimited point of view ending, and it worked. In fact, I think the ending is the best part of the whole book. And from what I understand, Steven Spielberg, who's made a movie of my book, has practically used all of the second half of the book in the movie. And once I realized what point of view this book needed, my writer's block went away. Steven Spielberg heard about my blockbuster unfinished novel, which I had allowed Vladimir Putin to publish and translate in Germany and Russia and he wanted to make a movie out of it. I couldn't believe it! And as it was shooting, Vladimir told me that Matthew McConaughey was cast as the lead character and I'd never heard of Matthew McConaughey until then. This was like 2005. I wasn't much of a movie goer. Matthew read my book and fell in love with me from reading the book. When I gave the novel an ending, the Nobel Prize Committee wanted to give me an informal Nobel Prize, you know, one that doesn't make all the main broad broadcasts. Because I couldn't believe it, because I had not even formally published any of my writings yet. I thought, geez, all this over my book? It's not that good. The movie was a, from what I understand, was a big hit and won some Academy Awards in a secret ceremony. 
I think they conducted it right after the main Academy Awards. They're still doing that sort of. They, they do, they're doing all this to protect me because they wanted to protect me. My men tried everything to give me the money a writer gets when their story goes Hollywood. But the Jesuits blocked my men and found me a major threat. And so far, I've not received anything more than $40 for all of my writings. And it's gone Hollywood. So Jesuits have been stealing and blocking me from getting my writing money. When I finally decided to publish the book to help my men give me my writing money, because this was getting dangerous, you know, like all this, I'm earning all this money from the movie version of my book and they're not giving me the money. It makes it look like they're trying to kill me so they can get my money. So it was getting dangerous that they weren't able to give me my writing money. It was making it look like they're evil, you know, and like they wanted to kill me for my money. So I said, you know what, I need, to, I need to help my men out. So I paid a publisher to publish my book. I figured since the book had already been made into a movie, now that I published it, now my men could give me my writing money. Uh, because before, before I published the book, the Jesuits were claiming that I was not the true author of the book that became the big hit movie, Silver Skies, and so I didn't deserve any money from the movie. But the Jesuits took over the publishing house where I published, and all the literary agents I wrote never answered me back or gave me Dear John letters. And my book had already gone Hollywood. I think it's very possible that the agents did not get the story as I wrote it and received an inferior substitute manuscript in the mail. Jesuits do these switch outs in the mail a lot. You know, I can't send anything in the mail that, that they find threatening where they won't switch it out and make it say something different than what I... They'll rewrite it and then the recipient won't get what I wrote. They've rewritten legal statements that I've sent to lawyers, and they've written rewritten emails I've sent to my men. The Jesuits are so thorough, they took over the publishing house, and everything I tried to do to get this novel to do well in the marketplace flopped. First, they sabotaged the cover. I wanted Matthew McConaughey on the cover because he was the star of the movie. But the Jesuits blocked that, acting like my novel never went to Hollywood, and the publisher cited copyright concerns. Next, I hired someone at the publisher to draw a portrait of Matthew for the, for the cover, who ended up looking like a red-haired, freckled-looking, innocent, and dimpled teenager. He looked nothing like my romantic lead. I thought, oh, horrors, this publisher hasn't even read my book. The publisher had a deadline to meet, and I didn't have time to get the picture right for the cover of the book. So without taking an art course, I used black ink and tried to make the portrait have the expression and emotions, you know, of my Silver Skies lead, who's manly and sensitive. I botched the cover. But the publisher said the book had to go out unless I wanted to pay another couple hundred bucks to hire the artist to redo the picture the way I wanted it. I paid this publisher enough. I was going bankrupt paying this publisher. I was using a credit card. It was basically $3,000 down the drain. They flunked at manuscript preparation. They flunked in cover design because the cover they, they did for me did not represent my book, which is what a book cover is supposed to do, so that when a reader sees it on the shelf, they know what kind of a book it is. They flunked in promotion because I got zero sales from them. I was stupid enough to pay them for promotion. Actually, I think the book did have sales, but I believe the Jesuits confiscated the money. I know people who bought the book, and yet the publisher was telling me I had zero sales. I, but, you know, fighting them in court it would cost more money for the lawyer, than, so it wasn't worth it. With that horrible cover, who'd even bother? I'd have to go to Pennsylvania to fight them, so I said, forget it. With that horrible cover, who'd even bother want to see what's inside anyways? That Jesuit cover makes it appear that what's inside... It's a Jesuit cover because they botched my cover, the Jesuits did. I, I'm going to blame it on them. It's their fault. Because that artist, that... Uh, I mean... That Jesuit cover makes it appear that what's inside stinks or is written by a crazy. But I paid this publisher too much money and I told myself, get that novel out. So the world will know that you are the author of the book that got made into the Spielberg movie. Even with a crappy cover, maybe it will work and you can get your writing money. But the Jesuits use that crappy cover to stop people from reading the book. That cover makes me look like I'm nuts and that nobody should publish anything I write. Next, my publisher told me that they would have to charge the public $32 for the book. I said, that's outrageous. Make it cheaper. We're in a terrible economy. They said, we can't. I said, so I told them to split the book in half so that people could afford to buy the book. 
I figured if they read the first half, they'd want to read the second half because I'm, you know, because the story's good. The problem is because of the crappy cover, people didn't even give the a hearing, the book a hearing. But I underestimated the effectiveness of the Jesuit brainwashing campaign against me. The cover was killing book sales and my and my reputation as a sane person. And I guess people don't want to read a book by a crazy, right? I will never pay a publisher again to publish my writings. The good news is I've developed some computer tech savvy over the past couple years and I'm able to publish all my writings now through Amazon.com for free as long as I do all the work in book design and Kindle formatting. And Amazon won't publish a book unless it's really a book. So these people are saying Amazon shouldn't publish me because I'm crazy. That's because they haven't even read the book. I write good books. Right after I published my book in January 2009 at, at, through this ripoff publisher, my computer crashed and I lost the only copy I had of Silver Skies on the computer or on paper. Fortunately, I had just published the book, so I had the story. But I wanted to have it back on my computer. So I spent the entire week I had on vacation from work in January 2009 rewriting the entire 600-page novel from bits and pieces I had of it. And guess what? I found a lot of problems, and I made it better. From 2009 to 2011, I polished this second edition of Silver Skies, correcting much of the major point of view problems in the first edition, which made the first half of the novel drag. My second edition is superior to the first edition. It has a cover that represents what's inside, and it's well written and edited. I just published the superior second edition of Silver Skies with some more corrections, to correct some Bible mistake, Bible reference mistakes I had in there, which I think Jesus would appreciate, with some more corrections a week ago, and it's up at Amazon Kindle right now. So you can get the second edition right now at Amazon Kindle, but if you want to wait for the paperback... Oh, and by the way, what's out at Amazon Kindle looks great, and I'm happy with it. I'm currently working on putting the second edition of Silver Skies at Amazon.com as a paperback. And with parts one and two together, and I will definitely not charge $32 for the book. Amazon.com lets me pretty much set the price and determine how much of a profit I want to make. I will charge a competitive rate for, rate for the book, probably $10 to $15, because it's about 500 to 600 pages. I originally wanted it to be a trilogy, you know, kind of like Lord of the Rings, a big fantasy trilogy. It will be out in paperback, but, but it's not... It's not it, it's, it can't be that. Um, it will be out in paperback in a couple weeks with a cover that represents well the story inside. What's inside is better too thanks to a computer crash. It's a story about characters who have a forbidden love for each other that transforms their lives. And all the stuff the Jesuits criticize about Silver Skies are not the main issues of the book. It's a story about characters whose lives are transformed because of the struggles they go through to honor their love, which is opposed by an empire.